Hey folks, welcome back to another top five video from yours truly, Sam Healy. Today I'm taking a look at my top five miniatures games. And this was a really difficult list for me to make to uh, find out what my top five were going to be. I probably could have done a top 10. Instead, we're just going to do some honorable mentions and then my top five. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Now, a couple of caveats that I've had with this list. I didn't go with just straight miniatures or just my favorite games that have miniatures in it. I tried to take a little bit more of a balanced approach that uh, gave me a list that had games that had really good miniatures in it and they're also really good games on top of that. And then I also had a couple of other caveats there where at least one of them was that I don't necessarily like games that have a large footprint on a table. If I have to put two tables together um, in order to play the game, there's not enough playing surface on just one table. That probably didn't make the cut because I was looking for games that are, first of all, accessible. Second of all, easy to hit the table. You don't have to provide special room modifications and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, an extra table or what have you. So those are a few caveats about that, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the honorable mentions. All right, now my first honorable mention is really a staple within the miniature gaming world, and that is Games Workshop's Warhammer. Now, a lot of people play Warhammer Fantasy, other people play Warhammer 40K, and GW is actually revamping all of those systems uh, with new sets that are coming out now, and they're actually delving a little bit more back into the board gaming aspect of, of games rather than just the tabletop miniatures style of games. So there's a lot that Games Workshop is still offering and any list that talks about miniatures, I think has to mention uh, some, at least one of game, Games Workshop's um, products because their miniatures are off the chain as far as uh, how detailed they are and how positive they are as far as quality is concerned. They don't bend over and fall over and they're not easily bendable and all this other kind of stuff. They're solid miniatures and they're really good miniatures. And that's why I'm, it's, they're making my honorable mentions list because the quality of GW's miniatures is so high, it warrants a, uh, a mention. Now, I didn't make my top five list because um, well, there are, I think, in my opinion, better games out there. On top of that, they're a little bit expensive, so that plays down the accessibility angle of it that I was talking about earlier. So my first honorable mention is Games Workshop. After Games Workshop, there is another game that is now no longer available, but it's one of my favorite miniatures games, and it was put out by Fantasy Flight, and it's called Tannhäuser. There you go. Um, I pronounced it correctly, but normally I call it Tannhauser. Uh, anyway, uh, Tannhauser is really cool. It has a little bit of a delineation here that it comes with painted miniatures, and that's a cool thing for most people. I enjoy painting miniatures, so if um, that's kind of like uh, somebody did my job for me, and so that's cool, that's fine, I enjoy that, and they were really well painted on top of that. So that's one of the reasons that made my honorable mentions was that, that uh, differentiating factor of having painted miniatures, whereas most of the other, these other games do not. My next honorable mention is a game by uh, Cool Mini or Not, and uh, it's called Rum and Bones. Now this box, just the base set, gives you a mess of miniatures, and it comes with a pretty fun game on top of that. So uh, they're kind of a, they're kind of the new kids on the block, though, kind of, um, as far as years are concerned. But they're really doing a good job, cool many or not, at putting out very quality level miniatures and then having a pretty quality game come along with it. So that's my uh, n next honorable mention, Rum and Bones. Now, the next two honorable mentions that I had, um, again, like I said, I could have done a top 10 list here, but I decided not to. These two honorable mentions are ones that I've already talked about on my Star Wars list, and that is uh, Star Wars Armada and um, the X-Wing Miniatures game. Again, these didn't quite make my list because more often than not, you have to have more of a playing surface than just one table. 
you've got to slide a couple of tables together in order to have a, a large enough playing surface to play this game. And like I said, I was trying to shy away from that for the accessibility and the ease of play angle that I was going for. So, but, but really, Armada and um, X-Wing, the miniatures game, <laughs> both of them are, are great games that have entirely good models in them. Uh, now, Armada took some flack because some of the uh, smaller uh, Rebel fighter and, and uh, Imperial fighters uh, squadrons were unpainted and they just didn't, they looked kind of blah. But that's because that's the scope of the game. Um, you're, you're focused on the bigger capital ships, not the smaller snub fighters. So that was that, uh, but had to mention them because they are excellent miniatures games. So now, on to the top five. Now, my number five is a game from a series of games that use a specific uh, system of battling. And that is the Command and Colors system of battling from Richard Borg. This specific game is Battle Lore. Now, I chose Battle Lore over Memoir 44 because the miniatures in Battle Lore are amazing. Uh, Battle Lore 2.0 just kind of hit it out of the park as far as the miniatures aspect was concerned. Now, I enjoy Memoir 44 as a game a little bit more, but the miniatures in Memoir 44 are not as good as the ones that are in Battle Lore. And so, because of that reason alone, it beat out Memoir 44 for my number five spot. My number four is a newcomer to the arena, but it is it comes with a rather well-recognized name, and that is Zombicide Black Plague. Now, I, I really did not, I hated on Zombicide, the original version, a lot because of a few of the nuances that it had in the game that I just was not on board with. It came out when a whole lot of other zombie games were coming out, and it just kind of melded into everything else for me. But Zombicide Black Plague, they fixed some of those problems from the original game. They've uh, gone with a new direction in the theming department where it's a medieval theme and medieval weapons and all of this kind of stuff and magic spells and incantations and all this kind of thing and it's live it's fresh the dashboards that come in zombie side black play just add to it but hey we're talking about a miniatures uh games list here so how are the miniatures in zombie side black plague again off the chain these guys are so nice looking um, so much detail, uh, so easy to paint, so to speak, and it is just an amazing production of miniatures in this. Now, my number three is a game that I have mentioned in another previous top five list, and it was on the Star Wars one, and you probably were expecting this one to come in, and that is Star Wars Imperial Assault from Fantasy Flight Games. Now, with, with Imperial Assault, the miniatures are very good, not as good as other other uh, companies that are making miniatures games right now, but they're still really, really good. And uh, it, they are easy to paint. They're just that right size to where um, you, it's, it's not too small that you're really having to struggle the entire time, but they're not so big to where it's difficult to make, um, I, I don't know what to say, they're just, the perfect size for painting. And that's one of the things that I like about it. I enjoy the hobby aspect, but on top of that, it has two viable ways to play the game. And both of those ways are excitingly fun. The campaign version, it's a little bit more heavy on the rules side, but still it provides that huge story arc with the Star Wars flavor that I really do enjoy. And then the skirmish aspect of it, uh, just uh, build your army, let's get in and battle each other. Great, both styles I enjoy greatly. So I knew this was gonna make my list. It sits at number three, Star Wars Imperial Assault. Now, my number two and my number one, it was very difficult to try and find out, to try and decide which one was going to be number two and which one was going to be number one. Because on one hand, there is a game that is just heavy and long, but has a lot of miniatures and it's a lot of fun. The other one has great miniatures, a good number of them, not a lot, but a good number of them. Has a tremendous game, but plays a lot faster than the other one. 
So I was kind of weighing which one's going to be which. Well, I decided on number two is Blood Rage. Blood Rage by Cool Meaning or Not and uh, designed by Eric Lang is my favorite game from last year by far. Head and shoulders above all the other games that I played. And it is just one of those games that I really enjoy playing. I have a great time playing it every single time it hits the board, even though the five player version is not really my cup of tea. I still enjoyed playing the game. Was annoyed, but still enjoyed playing it. Uh, I love how it's kind of a hybrid between a Euro game with the, those Euro me mechanisms that are in there, card drafting and, and that type of stuff, and, and a little bit of managing your abilities and whatnot. I love all of that, but I also love the Amerithrashy side of it, of, of getting in there, battling area control and that type of thing. I love how it's a hybrid, and the miniatures are amazing. They're so well done. The, the pictures that I've seen of people placing... Uh, their pictures on the net of, of how they've been painting all the mentors. Just amazing. So it had to make my list. It was going to be number one or number two. And so that's my number two, Blood Rage. Now you're probably already figured out what my number one is. If you haven't, you don't know me very well. My number one is Twilight Imperium 3. And while this is I guess somebody will probably try to cr uh, cry foul on this one because it really is a board game that just has miniatures. It's not really a mini -rich miniatures game, but hey, it is a superbly designed game and I, I truly enjoy every time I play this game. I don't play it often, once, maybe twice a year, but that is enough uh, for me. Uh, I, I wish sometimes I could play it more often, maybe once a quarter or something to that effect. But it is a long game and it is hard to get to the table, but it's one of those that when it does hit the table, it's a great time and it is a memorable experience. The miniatures with, with Twilight Imperium 3, they are, mm, you know, not as good, not as detailed as some of these other games that are out there now. And that's probably due to its age more than anything else. I think if Twilight Imperium 3 were put out today with the same production value as it already has, the uh, miniatures would be much more modern looking. But as, as that goes, they're still really nice miniatures. They're made of the harder plastic that was popular a few years ago. And uh, if you step on them, you know it because it hurts a lot, sometimes maybe even through your shoe, depends on how, how, how thick your sole is, but the, it, it is a miniatures game through and through. You could not play this game, and, and in my opinion, and still have the same enjoyment of it with uh, some other kind of medium for tracking all of your pieces, like cardboard pieces or what have you. Had to be miniatures, and so it is my favorite game of all time, and it is a miniatures game, so it had to make my number one. So those were my top five miniatures games. Let me know in the comments how much you agree or disagree with me. Again, you can disagree with me all I want. I, it doesn't bother me that you disagree with me. And I hope it doesn't bother you that I will disagree with you either. Because that's just the way the world is. There are some people who like certain things and define them some ways. And there are other people who... Just go in a different direction. That's the way we are. But I hope you enjoyed the list. Um, I had fun making it. It's, these are all great games. All of the honorable mentions could really, quite frankly, have the validity of making anybody's top five list. In my opinion, they're all great games and I enjoy all of them very much. So that's my top five miniatures games. See you on the flip side, folks.